everybody, my name is Sarah Devlin and I was really excited to get to work on this drawing today. Um, as you can see, the drawing I showed you before was the first version of this drawing I did, so this is another kind of redemption for me. Um, I'm doing this with alcohol-based markers. You might have seen in the beginning I held the case up to the camera. Oh, woohoo markers! Um, I do have a review that I did before that I can link to. So what this is, is it is, I guess, fan art of the comic artist Julia Kay. She is the artist of the Up and Out comic, and she recently released a book called The Super Late Bloomer, which I will link to as well, which is her experiences as a trans woman as she transitions um, in her early 20s, I believe. So yeah, I'm just sketching it out. It was originally just a straight on face. And then when I was looking for reference photos of her, I found a picture of her I really liked. Um, and I just decided to draw from that and kind of transfer that picture into a drawing of her. So right now I'm sketching it out. Um, I'm sitting on my porch actually, like and then you can see below it some stone, the walkway there. Um, it was a really nice day when I filmed this. It felt like it was going to rain, but it actually didn't. Um, and I just really enjoyed being outside. It was not too hot for once. And I'm sorry my head's in the way so much, but I'm drawing her out based on the picture. You can kind of see my phone there in the corner. I had the picture on that. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm adding in her eyebrows and drawing her face, and I purposely avoided the texture of her shirt, because I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it's like a plaid flannel, and her hair, she has the prettiest, curliest, craziest hair, and I love it, and that was one of the reasons I'd wanted to draw her, just because it was so pretty, but it's also, it seemed really daunting and challenging to me, just because it was rather complicated to draw all those little curls, so I'd been putting it off and putting it off and trying to figure out ways to like simplify it. What I finally settled on was just kind of a simplified, curly, tight curl texture with a few curls sticking out here and there and, you know, more designed bangs, um, more uh, fleshed out, I guess. I don't know. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm coming up with her hair, drawing in her dimples, and now I'm drawing her shirt. Um, I really like her comic style, which is something that first drew me to her. and. My girlfriend really likes her too. She finds her work very relatable and we both just like looking at it together. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. So now I'm getting out a, a fine liner to do the marking. I believe it's an 05 uh, Sakura Pigma Micron pen, which is what I use all the time. And I'm kind of more into the, the 05s. I never really used to use them, but you can see I'm doing a slightly thicker lining like I did with the tracer painting. Um, and I wasn't planning on painting this, I'm planning on using alcohol-based markers, which is what, why I'm using this particular sketchbook. It's a Canson um, Mixed Media, I don't, it's not the XL, I forget specifically what it is, but it's a Canson sketchbook. Totally did not mean to flip off the camera there, sorry. And I'm also, I'm sorry my head's in the way so much, you can see how windy it was that day, I'm on my hair kind of going all over the place, but you can still see what I'm doing, more or less. Um, and her hand, again, I feel like I kind of messed up the hands, like, I've been practicing hands a lot, like I said, and I just felt like this one wasn't quite as good as what I've been doing. So I'm erasing all the pencil lines, and there's the color swatch. Um, it was the picture I did of her. You can kind of see the, like, bleed through there where her skin's really orange and not a natural skin color, I would say, that finally pushed me to making swatches because they're not I know I said in the original uh, review I did of these pens which I will link to there's gonna be so many links for this video um, I said the colors of the pens like the color that it colored was the same as the cap and for a lot of them that's true but for a lot of them it's not so I'd say it's about 50 50 especially I've noticed it happens to be more of the markers that I would consider skin toned don't actually um, look the way you think they would um, so I'm just coloring in her hair now. Yeah, and I'm trying to be really careful that it doesn't bleed through the edges because it's not so much with this paper, but it has a, t a tendency to bleed outwards a little bit from where you put it down. I guess it's just because the paper is absorbing it. So I was just trying to be careful to make sure it didn't go too far. So yeah, and then I had to decide what to use for for her eyes and her skin. So I started with her skin rather than her eyes because her eyes are really pretty hazel and I wasn't sure how to do that since that's more than one color. But I decided I was gonna color her skin first, so that was what I did. I 
And then I went about trying to do some shading and I noticed like I could see where there was lighter spots on her face, like shine spots, I guess. I don't know. There, wherever she took the picture, there wasn't really a lot of light. It was, so there wasn't anything too drastic, but I wanted to create that kind of depth. Also, I apologize that you can kind of see down my shirt in this shot. Um, I was so careful about that when I was recording the first set of shots and then I just forgot. So I'm coloring in her neck and chest now and I'm going over her lips because I wanted them to be the same color as her skin but I also wanted them to be pink because they're pink naturally. I'm coloring her hand and I'm sorry that's off screen but you get the idea. I'm just coloring it in. Um, and let's see, what am I doing now? I'm checking the colors. Trying to decide, I think. Yeah, and here I'm doing some test swatches for her eyes, because Hazel's made up of green and brown colors, and I was trying to decide whether I should lay down the green first and then do brown over top, or lay down the brown first and do the green over top, which you can tell I did the green first, and then kind of colored around the pupil with the brown, and I felt like that made a decent Hazel. And now I'm trying to pick colors for her shirt, and I decided rather than try to drive myself insane with trying to exactly copy the plaid of her shirt, I was just going to do something that was similar to it to just kind of give you the gist of it. So I picked out the three, I guess four in the end, most prominent colors from her shirt and did a kind of plaid of that. So that's what I'm doing here. You'll see I pick out a fourth color in a couple of minutes because there's like a white, but it was just, it was too stark to leave it just plain white. So I picked out that really like pale beige color, kind of an off white. And I felt like that worked really well. So I'm, now I'm adding in the yellowish stripes and then coloring around it. I didn't really exactly follow the shirt for that because it would have just it would have made me focus on things too much that I didn't need to be focusing on and it would have just stressed me out and I wouldn't have been focused on the picture as a whole. I would have been really stressed out about like different parts of her shirt matching exactly. But I feel like it's close enough that you can tell it's a flannel shirt. You can tell that she's holding her arm out to take the picture and she's doing a peace sign. So yeah, I think it turned out nice, her shirt. I guess I'll link to the picture that I used for inspiration as well. So that's what, four links now? <laughs> so link heavy today. So I'm just finishing up her shirt. Um, I was going to color in the button and I never did, but I guess that's all right. Um, and I think once I finish the shirt, I don't have too much left to do. I was trying not to get frustrated and just want to be done because when I do com more complicated patterns like that, I just kind of get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to move on to the next thing. So I was trying really hard not to get like that. I wanted to take my time on the whole thing, but not take so much time I got frustrated. So I'm just finishing that up here. Now I'm picking out, I do believe, some shadows. It's kind of hard to tell, but I'm shading now, adding. Uh, and here is the finished picture. I kind of skipped over the shading part, sorry. But yeah, I really like how it turned out. And I kind of wanted to have her picture, the finished picture, by the flowers, just because since her book's called Super Late Bloomer, and that makes me think of flowers. So yeah, that is pretty much it for what I did. Um, I think it turned out really nice. You can actually see here I kind of forgot her um, eyelashes, which I kept thinking about and reminding myself to add, but I did add them in. And if you go look at my Instagram, which if I can, I'll link to that too, um, you can see that I did add them in eventually before I like tweeted the picture at her, posted her on Instagram. So yeah, that is it for today's um, speed drawing. I really liked getting a chance to draw a queer creator and celebrate them and their work a little bit. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.